And in this case, an image is a matrix. Is a sorry, f is an image, but it's a vector. And and I think I've I think I computed this a matrix that you're saying it's uh, the, the, is is kind of difficult to do. So really, so what is the m matrix? Does anyone have an idea? Of what does anyone have an idea of what they think the m matrix is? All right, this and up here on the board is a. Right, it's the forward projection. But what? How would you? Well, it, this is just a. The right hand side is just a path integral. Right, it's f is f. F is the value of your image at, at each pixel, and then, so in order to to get p, you have to sum up f over the, over the path of the ray. So what I had to do to compute f was, for each beta and gamma. See, in this case, we have one array. It's projected from some source point at an angle beta, and this array has some angle gamma. See, this image here is, is just one vector of the M matrix. It's just for one case of a beta and gamma. What you have to do is you have to... For, this, this is a pixel... This, is a, this image here is the size of our image F, and for each pixel in the image F, you have to find out what path length the ray takes through that pixel. And... If you multiply, and you see that if you multiply f by that, you get the measured path integral. And so, uh, remember, this case is just for one ray integral. Uh, so this would just be one m. This would, this would just be one vector in the m matrix. So um, now th these matrices are too big to invert this equation to solve for f. And also, uh, I'm missing some p data, p data, as I mentioned. So I can't. You can't uh, directly invert the uh, matrix equation. So this is where this is where um, this is, I think this is just one type of art, but this is a this is an iterative technique here that I'm, I'm about to show you of how to solve this equation. This this particular technique is called uh, it has an acronym POCS and that's projection on convex sets. So in this case, this image here, or this sorry, this graph here. Is for the case that we have a simple image, an image with two pixels. You see f1 and f2. These two equations here, these two linear equations, are just this matrix ex equation expanded. And so, if you if you expand the matrix equation and plot out the linear equations, you should get an intersection. And this intersection satisfies all f1, f2 to the, to the size of your image for a, for this matrix equation. Now, this is just the case for a two-pixel image. So it's in 2D space. But if you have an n-dimensional image, this is, these, these lines are hyperplanes in n-D space. And you're looking for the intersection of all, these, of all the hyperplanes represented by linear equations you get from this matrix equation. So one way, so in the, in the POCS method, POX, I don't know if anyone calls it POX. But, uh, in the POC, POX method, did you? Okay, okay. Uh, and so in the POPS method, which, what you do is you, you make some guess, <coughs> bless you, you make some guess and you, you take, you find, uh, you go through each one of your hyperplanes, or in this case lines, and you take, you, you do a perpendicular projection onto, onto that, onto each line. So in this case, here's the first per, uh, perpendicular projection from the initial guess. And then you make another perpendicular projection onto your second line. And then you, you begin the process again. You, you go back, you project back onto the first line. You project onto the second line. And, this, and for, an n, for an image with n pixels, you have, to, you have to project it here, project it to the next line, then the next line to the next line, and then start it over again. And that's one iteration. And then hopefully you will reach this intersection point. Now, I, I implemented this technique, and this is for a case of, uh, you know, over 50,000 pixels, and so an iteration is consists of you know one of these projections for each 50,000 pixels, and then starting over again. So after 78 iterations, this is this is my reconstructed image. Uh, I've I've read in uh, I've read it, I've seen in certain places that I've read in certain papers that sometimes uh, if in, in case of a noisy image, it can take up to 10,000 iterations of art. To reconstruct the image. Uh, in this case, I wasn't really working with noisy data, so. But still, I I, I have I've done much less than ten thousand iterations, and uh, 
I know that if you apply the total variation technique I've read in certain places that you can, for the case where, this particular case that I read where it took 10,000 iterations of art, if you then, with each, after each iteration of art, if you apply the total variation technique, that is if you tried to minimize the gradient of the image, you can reduce the number of iterations from 10,000 to something like a thousand or a hundred or something like that. But I didn't, uh, I didn't get around to implementing, I also failed to implement, to, to get around to implementing total variation as uh, these guys did as well. I was also interested in it initially. Um, but because I got to fewer iterations, my future work here is to work harder, work smarter, and get help. Namely, working harder, getting better processors, you know, harder working processors. And work smarter, I'm going to try, I'll try to implement the gradient descent technique to reduce the number of iterations and get help from other uh, CPUs, parallel process. And then... Very good. Okay, question? <laughs> actually, actually, I was looking at your one panel where you didn't think you got. I think you got. Uh, this one over here? Or? No, further back. Yeah. No, I think you actually have it. It's just your, um, your cost and the way you're looking at it. You build that up. You change the I, I, you mean the, I tried changing the view. Change the I changed the window. Like, you may remember the, in the solution to project to Professor Zhu and the, I, I guess you wrote the code, but. In displaying the image, he, he picks a certain window. I guess is the standard window, like 0 0.95 to something. Yeah, and so mine has less intensity, so I did modify that in order to see an image. And I tried, I tried to fudge this as best I could. This, this is, is the one best. Right here looks like you're calling for this right now. This one right here. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's that far off. But in this case, it's just on on the computer screen here. I can see the white oval here. You guys can't see it. I get a little, I do get a very, very uh, vaguely, I can see it on my on the screen here. But, of course, on the, I don't know if I have the true image, I don't. But on the true image, you, you probably could see it. And I think that, I think the reason why the, in, the intensity or contrast is less is because you're summing over, you're doing a, the back projection from 0 to 220 degrees rather than 0 to 360 degrees, right? The integral your integral or your summation is over less data. And I'm not sure if it's normalized after the fan beam. That's what I think is the reason that it's more contrast. Now it looks like you're very close to you. Yeah. No, you don't. Very close to you. Oh, very close. Very close to you. But with uh, the... With usually the what I do is, I also, when I, when I do some coding, I'll, typically I work out some results like this before the, the final result. And uh, what I will do is I look at the, the value. I calculate the ratio I need to multiply on this, on this sensor in order to make it correct. Usually that number tells you something. Sometimes that number is just pi over two or something. Uh -huh. Then you know, oh, I, I shouldn't have turned this back to But then, but in other the words, you, you find out the answer, <laughs> what the answer should be. And give it a justification. It's easy. <laughs> it's not cheating. It's a different way of dividing. Uh -huh. Sometimes you forget when you do integration, you need to you need to multiply dx value, right? Right. For, right. for example, sometimes dx is just the the, the, the pixel size right. of the projection. Sometimes the pixel size is one. You ignore that. Sometimes the pixel size is not one. Right. Point nine something. Right. Multiply by five point four nine. Huh. It's really hard to tell what the number should be there, but you need to when you do the calculations, see what's the uh, what's the number is what's the number you expect, and from that number you can tell uh, some part of the equation. Right, but so usually this number has a factor of pi. Are you just no, no? I'm just uh, okay. different. So it's not something to do with the angle. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Does it? Do you think the factor is related to the ratio of the 360 to 220? Yes, it's also possible. Uh -huh. It's also possible. I'm just suggesting a way of uh, dividing. <laughs> and also, can you go back to the slide about calculating? Calculating the, the formula. Uh, you directly copy this formula from the, from the paper? Well, in the paper, he uses different variables. 
Alpha and I didn't want to confuse you guys, so I this one is from uh, from the uh, fix variable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can pass the fix variable. The formula is wrong. I passed it. Oh, that's a warning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, I think I I think uh, book it is okay. I think I saw another typo in a a paper on. Uh, let me show you here. Uh, and I saw, I read one paper where this was a plus sign. Okay. Right, not, this, it depends on definition of the, of the part of the direction. All right, sorry, no, this wasn't a, this was a minus sign, this was switched. Like it was PI okay. minus. Okay. Is this from the hand paper? Yeah, yeah. It's in keys, first off. Yes, you can, yeah. We should remember the thing also. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We have part of waiting. Yeah, I forgot to take the pen. Can you can go to my office? I have a solution with it. Right?